Hello fellow Scratchers, I'm Griff Batch and today I'm going to teach you how to make a Scratch game. And not just any game, Rob Top's hugely popular Geometry Dash. In this first episode we'll cover how to draw the classic Geometry Dash character and use Scratch's block coding language to bring them to life. But the fun really begins when we combine that thumping soundtrack with a custom design level that anyone can create all within Scratch itself. What's more, I've got a brilliant trick to teach you to create that awesome Jump to Dash style side scrolling effect and it only requires two clones. So cool! Are you ready for this? Guys, let's get scratching! We begin by creating a new project. This is Geometry Dash in Scratch. So Scratch's projects always begin with a cat sprite named Sprite 1 and clicking into the costume editor we find two cat costumes already drawn. Ignore these for now and click here to paint a brand new costume. For that classic Geometry Dash character we'll use the rectangle tool and pick a yellow fill but keep the border black with a width of 4 pixels. The canvas area represents a full game screen. So since the player needs to be small we'll zoom in until we can see the center point of the drawing canvas and can still count out four squares diagonally up and left of center. Now begin drawing from there and while still dragging you'll find if we hold down the shift key the shape becomes a perfect square. Useful to know and I have loads more tips where that came from. Once done check the size of our costume here on the left. We are aiming for a 34 by 34 pixel size. If you need to shrink the player down a touch then do that now. Lastly, to allow the player to rotate beautifully later on, not like this, we must drag the entire shape and let it snap to the center point on the canvas. You see that? That fixes the problem so you should do it now. Great, so we can go to town making this player our own. A few extra rectangles makes all the difference. Awesome, I love that. I'm now going to tidy up and delete those old cat costumes. Sorry Scratchy, we won't be needing you in this tutorial. Ok, what really makes Geometry Dash stand out from other jumping games is its fantastic music tracks. If we click into the sounds tab and then on the choose a sound option we can see what Scratch has to offer us in the way of music. Filter by loops. Then we can… no, no, gosh no. Ah, right, now you're talking. Dance Energetic has some punch to it but it's only a short clip so it will need looping. Click into the code tab and we'll drop in our first simple coding blocks. When flag clicked. This triggers code to run when the game begins. Forever. This control block tells Scratch to keep running the same script over and over again. Then under the sounds category there's a start sound and a play sound until done block. We want the until done one so that the full sound is played before it tries to start over again. Click on the green flag icon and our short music loop begins to play and hopefully when it usually would end the forever loop starts it all over again. Awesome, that would indeed do the trick. But what if we'd prefer to have a longer more unique music track like those used from the original Geometry Dash? Well fear not, we can easily import music of our own into Scratch or source tracks from other Scratch projects. For example just open another Scratch window and search for Geometry Dash Music in the Scratch search bar. There are literally hundreds of projects that already contain the music we are looking for. Look in a sprite and there it is, stereo madness. We just open our backpacks found at the bottom of the screen and drag the desired music track down there. Then back in our Scratch game we open the backpack and drag the music track into Sprite 1. Like so, easy right? Ok, tidy up by deleting those unwanted sounds and moving back into the code we have to remember to update the play block to use the new sound we just imported. Yeah that is brilliant. But hold on, we can't just use music or graphics from a real game without giving credit so switch to the project page view and enter Stereo Madness soundtrack by Rob Top Games. Thank you Rob Top, you legends! Now back to business. 
Before we go on to look at designing a scrolling level, I know, so cool, let's add some basic jumping scripts. When the space key is pressed, we want to quickly move the player up and down again, but not instantly, gradually over time. So repeat 10 times. We want to change Y by 10. This will move the player upwards by 10 pixels, that's quite small, 10 times in a row, creating a short animation. And what goes up, in this case, won't come back down, not unless we tell it. So duplicate that repeat script, but change Y this time by negative 10, minus 10. Changing Y by a negative number always moves the sprite downwards. You don't even need to run the project to test this, just click out of the change Y block, and then as soon as we press the space bar, yay, nice, the player jumps. But if you think that's good, wait until the next episode where we'll make this way, way more cool. But let's not get carried away. We have much to do before then. It's a good time to give Sprite 1 an official name, so rename it Player. And now let's make a start on our geometry dash level, yeah! Click into the stage sprite and into the backdrop costume tab. This is where we get to choose or draw the fancy backdrop that sits behind all the sprites in our game. But for a scrolling game, it's not actually so useful because backdrops are static. They cannot be moved around or scrolled. What we can do though is lay down a nice purple rectangle as a simple wallpaper that will sit behind our game. Now the actual Geometry Dash level requires a new sprite of their own, so click to paint a new sprite, like so. And what we need is a floor. Using the rectangle tool again, I'll choose a more vivid purple, so turn up the saturation a touch and make it a tad darker. Then make sure to set the border width to zero. It's important that the edges are left as a solid colour. Now the rectangle we draw must be quite low down to give us plenty of space for our game. It must also cover the entire width of the inner canvas. And I'd advise you overlap each edge just that tiniest bit. This will help us avoid getting those ugly seams showing up later on. Talking of which, you'll notice things are not looking lined up in the stage view. Now don't worry, we can easily drag sprites around on there, but better still, we can accurately position them by setting their X and Y to zero using these controls below the stage. Great, that's perfectly aligned now. Good work. Want to decorate the level further? Sure thing. Go to town. I'm adding a more vivid rectangle and then quickly creating copies by holding down the Alt key and dragging the shape. Better still, hold down Shift 2 and the new shape remains horizontally aligned to the initial shape, so everything looks extra smart. That's another neat trick. Alt and then Shift. One more thing. This wouldn't be Geometry Dash without the white line across the top of the floor. Using the Line tool, with the width set to 4, and again holding the Shift key to keep the line horizontal, we can draw out such a line. Do keep using the shift key trick as you don't want this line to be anything but straight across. Lastly, using the selection tool, I could select the line and nudge it up and down using the arrow keys on my keyboard to move it into exactly the right place. Okay, that's looking great. All except that my player is floating. Hold on, you can't move sprites when in full screen mode. Click back inside and then drag them until they sit nicely on the floor. Somewhere over to the left side of the screen is perfect. And oh my, this is looking so Geometry Dash, right? We gotta get this floor scrolling. Name the sprite Level, and then click back into its coding tab. When flag clicked. So in a scrolling game, the player doesn't move. Forever block? Instead, the level does. So change X by, and since negative numbers move things left, we can try negative two. Oh gosh, that is way too slow. Try perhaps negative 10. Ah now, we're not seeing anything here because the level has already moved fully left. We need to reset the position back to the right before the game begins. We can do that with a go to x y block before the forever loop and change it to be an x of zero and a y of zero. That's the center of the screen. That's nice and speedy now, but although we are moving it left forever, 
Do you notice how it's actually getting stuck on the left edge of the screen? <laughs> this is known as sprite fencing in Scratch, and it can actually be very useful, but right now, and often is the case, not so much. Luckily, there's an easy workaround. Back in the costume editor, we simply draw a long rectangle below the visible area of the canvas. See, this will be off screen, but also wider than the visible level, overhanging at the left and right edge. This extra width fools Scratch into allowing the sprite to move further off screen than it otherwise could, and that is all we need to do to make the magic happen. What a great start! But obviously, as the level costume scrolls off to the left, we are now in need of a new costume, or sprite, to scroll in from the right to take its place. In theory, we could line up a whole sequence of these level sprites to construct an entire level, but using all these large sprites can be costly, and we might even run out of resources. So how about we scrap all but two of the sprites and simply cycle them around over and over again to create the illusion of an infinite level. To code this up, let's focus on just one of the level sprites. We need to know that Scratch's screen is 480 pixels wide. Therefore, when a level sprite has moved left by negative 480, we will need to move it back over to the right by not just 480, but twice that, 960 then it will be ready to come back in from the right to complete the effect. Let's do this. We are already scrolling left, we just need a conditional if block and a less than check. If the new X position of the sprite is now less than negative 480, then we want to move it back to the right by 960. If all our calculations are correct, then this should look pretty cool. Run the project! And that is very smooth. We have the first level sprite in place. We just need a second one to join in to fill that gap. So we could create a physical second level sprite, but that would begin to complicate our level design and scripting. Instead, we'll keep one sprite, but create a second copy through code using clones. To demonstrate this, in the costume editor, name the first costume level 1.1. .1. It's the first level of the game and is the first costume of the level. And then right click and duplicate the costume as level 1.2. Perfect, the second costume. We'd do well to draw a small square at the top so that we can tell the two costumes apart. Right, are you ready? Separate off the forever loop script but keep it handy, we'll need it again. Then under the control category, find the create clone of myself block. This will literally create a copy of the sprite exactly as it is right now. And we can have the clone run our scrolling scripts here by dropping in a when I start as a clone hat block and then attach them together like so. Should we give that a test? Okay, so that doesn't look great. We can see the scrolling clone behind the original sprite, which is no longer scrolling. For simplicity, it'd be best to hide that original sprite. So drop a hide block in before the clone is created. And then remember to show the clone sprite before it starts to scroll. Let's test that again. Green flag time. And now things are back to normal. Only having made the switch to use clones, the next step of adding a second clone is super easy. Make sure the first clone though is switched to use costume level 1.1 prior to being cloned, and then we can prepare our second clone. We want to start on costume 2, so drop in a next costume block. Also, it will begin 480 pixels to the right of the first level sprite, so change X by 480. And that's it. We can create a clone of myself to make it official. Guys, are you ready for this? Hit that green flag. Oh joy, look at what we have created. A beautiful infinite scrolling background composed of both the first and second costumes of this level, cycling around and around forever. This is really neat. And there are so many uses for this, but I can't wait to add some obstacles for the player to actually jump over. Then it will start to feel like a real game. Perhaps a deadly ground spike. We can remove that random hovering square and begin by drawing a black square 
holding shift for that perfect shape, we could perhaps do with seeing how big this looks on the stage. Click show to make it visible. Ah, but we also need to ensure it's moved into view with an x and y of 0, 0. Whoa, that's much too big. Now, to create a triangle, we can use the shaping tool, simply select one corner and click delete. There you go. Now to fix the rotation, use a select tool and while rotating, hold that magic shift key once more and it constrains to 45 degree angles. Perfecto! Just reduce its width and to complete that geometry dash aesthetic, give it a white border, again with a width of 4 pixels. Looking really cool indeed, but alas, this colouring actually causes us a slight problem. To detect when the player touches a hazardous part of our level, like a spike, we could really do with it being a unique colour. Hmm, yeah. In Geometry Dash, everything is black and white, so to differentiate them, we'll have to cheat a little. We'll keep the level borders white, but change the spike outline to be a very pale yellow, with perhaps a saturation just above 8 or so to ensure it remains detectable. Ok, that looks acceptable to me. Let's see if we can detect a collision using that colour. Click back into the player sprite, and we'll need a new when flag clicked hat block. Then simply wait until we're touching a colour. Oh bother, the spike is no longer visible on the stage. Quickly click back into the level sprite and make it visible. Again. And set x back to 0. There it is. And while we're here, and to avoid having to keep setting this x to 0 manually, why don't we drop in a go to x, y, 0, 0 after we create the second clone here. Nice, that will make things easier going forward. So back into the player sprite. Now we can see the spike, so let's set the collision colour that we're waiting for. The colour picker lets us select it directly from the stage. But you have to be careful to pick the right part. Splendid! That looks about right. So when we finally collide, from the control category, drop in a stop all block. It will be game over, dude! Run the project and we'll give it a test. If the colour matches, and yes it certainly does, then the game ends. A good test indeed, but it's really not the snazzy Geometry Dash ending we were all hoping for. Why does the entire level disappear, do you know? Well, it's because when a Scratch project stops, Scratch deletes all the clones. So all our level clones vanish. In that case, rather than literally ending the game, how about we force the level to stop scrolling instead? For this we'll need extra control over the scrolling. This is a good opportunity for a Scratch variable, naming it Scroll Speed, and leave it for all sprites. Click the OK to confirm. So when the game begins, set this new variable scroll speed to negative 10. You'll see that if we click into the level sprite now, that negative 10 is also the amount that we're changing x by to scroll the level. In that case, it should make no difference to replace the negative 10 with a copy of the scroll speed variable. We can run the project and confirm that this indeed makes no difference whatsoever. So why bother with that variable at all? Aha! Click back into the player sprite. Now we can control the scrolling using this variable. So instead of stopping the entire project, we'll switch this to only stop other scripts in this sprite. That will stop the forever loop that is playing our music track, but it won't prevent the continued scrolling of the level. But now, if we use a repeat 10, we can then bring the scrolling speed to a gradual stop by changing scroll speed by 1. The result is a smooth but quick deceleration of the scrolling speed to a complete standstill with a scroll speed of 0. I love it! Now we just need to get the player to stop sliding after impact and instead stop dead in their tracks. No problem, first we need to ensure our player begins the game in their current fixed position. Go to XY and it should pre-populate with our current and the correct x and y position. Next, within the repeat 10, once the game is over, we want to scroll the player like we do the level. So change x by and drop in the same scroll speed variable. Can it be that easy? 
And do you see how the collision now carries us back along with the level, rather than plunging on through as before? Man, this is really coming together. Really awesome. What do you guys think? I'm feeling a collision sound would make this even better. Click into the Sounds tab of the player sprite and search up a new sound. Under the Effects filter. And here's the bonk sound effect. We can start playing it right after stopping the other scripts, but before we begin the slow down animation. And see how we're starting to play it now rather than waiting until it's finished. Oh man, yeah, that's horrid and perfect at the same time. So funny. Well, this episode is almost done. Can you tell? But hold on, I can't help but think the level is just a bit too boring to stop here. With just the same single spike repeating over and over again. Ugh. Can we not add new level costumes and have them included in the sequence of scrolling scenes? We can test this by having one and then two and then three spikes in a row. But the answer at present is no. We still only see the same two costumes repeating over and over. But don't worry, the solution is super easy. Whenever we cycle a level sprite back around, we also can skip it forward by two costumes. Then, working as a pair, the two clone sprites can now recreate any arbitrary long level that we design. So let's put that into practice. After changing X by 960, we skip forward by two costumes. Next costume, next costume. Does it work? There's the first spike, and the second spike, and three spikes before the whole pattern repeats. Seamless. Now that is cool, right? So cool and so easy to build up and extend. Indeed, there's so much more to look forward to in the next episodes. Moving particles, improved jumping with player rotation, multi-level platforms and with great collision detection and resolution. It's going to be awesome. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please smash that like button. That helps me to reach more people here on YouTube and I'd really appreciate it. Also, why not subscribe to the channel? Checking that bell icon to ensure as soon as the next video drops, you'll be one of the first to know. Let me know in the comments how you get on. And if you want to share your progress, then there's an official Scratch Studio for this tutorial linked under the video. I just love to see how creative you guys can be. Well, that is it from me. So thanks for watching. Have a great week ahead and scratch on guys.